Um, can you hear me in the back? Okay, um, well, I'm going to start out with our mission statement. I think that will really explain about what we are trying to accomplish with this business. Um, our mission statement is, Talking Bird Goats of Arizona is dedicated to providing natural and healthy artisan goat milk products to our local community and visitors. Our goats are our family, and we continually strive to share our passion about goats and goat products with others. So that basically t tells you what we are all about. Um, sure. Now you're probably wondering how two people um, that have no background in agriculture or livestock got into the goat business. Well, there is a reason, and there's a story, and I'll say it quickly. Um, my husband and I always went to the Yuma County Fair. We lived in Yuma at the time, and we always went to the Yuma County Fair, and of course the animals were um, something we always wanted to see. Well, there was a sign on a cage that said, baby goats for sale. <laughs> and we bought those three babies, and now we have 60 to 80 goats. We knew nothing about goats, absolutely nothing. Uh, we have a mentor who helped us. We read, we learned by trial and error, and I mean error. Mm -hmm. uh, we had all kinds of things happen to us. We didn't know what to do, but we worked it out, and um, we feel as though we've come a long way from where we were 13 years ago. Uh, the importance, I'll talk about the, the importance of quality products, first of all. Um, we make all of our, our uh, products. We, we make cheese, fudge, soap, lotion, dog treats. The importance of making them in small quantities. We um, are not mass, we do not mass produce anything. So we are considered artisan. Um, freshness is very important to us. It, um, we try and keep our cheese and fudge fresh. We make it right before we're ready to sell it. We, I don't like to keep anything um, on a shelf for a long period of time. Because all of our products are natural and do not contain any preservatives, um, we, um, um, we, um, uh, make it at the last minute and sell it. So uh, that is really important to us. Our reputation is extremely important because we do sell our products out in the community and word of mouth is absolutely the worst thing for someone who's trying to be in business. So um, we, we take our business very seriously and we want to produce and do produce a quality product. Um, we check our milk for foreign Particles, we make sure there's no mastitis uh, particles in our milk, no blood, no dirt, and no alfalfa. If we do, um, we have to um, get rid of it. Um, one of our biggest concerns is the safety of our animals. We are very meticulous about our, our care of our animals. Um, they have become like our children. Um, don't sell an animal that you name because you won't be able to do it. <laughs> so um, that was, um, that's one of our things that it's very difficult for us when we have to sell an animal and um, we've named it. So don't name them. You can number them though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I said before, um, we started out in Numa with our goats, and then we decided we were going to move um, out of Yuma County. We had a market we were uh, going to in Scottsdale, so every Saturday we would drive to Scottsdale from Yuma to sell our products. And then my daughter, who lived in Washington State, was coming back to um, the valley, so we wanted to be closer to her. So we um, moved to Florence, and um, we live on a 30-acre ranch, and we totally live off the grid. And 
when if you, when you come to our um, up to our ranch, we have so many stories to tell you about some of the wonderful things that have happened to us up there. So, um, Suzanne, take your slides forward. It's all about the goats. I will give you a little background about, about goats. Male goats are called bucks. Baby male goats are called bucklings. A castrated male is a weather. Females are does. Baby females are doelings. Um, a year old goat is a yearling. Um, I'll tell you, um, Toggenberg goats came to the United States in the late 1800s. These are the kind of, the, the breed of goats that we raise. Um, they um, originated in the Toggenberg Valley of Switzerland. They are average sized goats. They have wonderful personalities. Um, one of um, the most famous herds of Toggenberg goats originated with Carl Sandburg, the poet. His wife raised Toggenbergs in Michigan and then moved them to Asheville, North Carolina. Their estate is now a national park and they still have some of the ancestral goats from their, her original herd. Um, we had the privilege of going there um, to a goat convention and went to his, um, his estate and it's fascinating to see um, the goats and they all look alike, all of them. <laughs> some pictures of our babies from last spring. Um, I will um, tell you that baby goats um, are, the gest gestation period of a baby goat is 150 days. We usually put our, um, our goats, our does, in with our bucks in August, and they will breed, and they will kid, which means have babies, in January, February, and March. Um, a goat, a doe, will carry her babies on her right-hand side. On her left-hand side are her stomachs. Goats have four stomachs, along with giraffes, camels, cows, and even tigers. Mm. I didn't even know that until I looked at that up, but anyway. Tigers, you said? Tigers, they're Romans. <laughs> Roman means four stomachs. <laughs> we have sold more goats this year than ever. Um, um, why are people buying more goats? Because they want to become independent and um, be self-sustainable. Some people have goats because they're lactose intolerant. Um, they're easy to raise, and you can use your mil their milk for many products. <coughs> this little girl looks kind of rough. Um, up in the mountain where we live, it, um, it has already gotten, dropped down to 39 degrees, so she has already started to get her, her winter coat. And this picture right here is of uh, a doe, and she's just had twins, and she's um, licking the baby off. It's really important that a, uh, a mother goat bonds with her babies when they're first born. One of the problems that my husband and I had, we thought it was really important that we get in there and help with the babies and do all this and that. It's not good to do that. They need time to bond. And so we, we are there and available to help them if they get in trouble um, when they're birthing, but we um, do not interfere with the bonding process. And now Bob's going to tell you about our water and power. Yeah, we're totally off the grid. We're 25 miles southeast of Florence. We're on the north side of the 96 Island. And uh, 
The nearest power line is 14 miles away. And uh, so to live in that area, there's only, there's only about five ranches in that area. Uh, it's, it's the Barkerville Road, which is the old stagecoach road from Florence to Tucson. And uh, basically, you, before you even build a house there, you need to be able to get water. So we have a solar well, and it's about 150 foot deep with about a 50 foot base of water. And it's very good, high quality water. Yuma County, we had very poor water. You could pour a glass of water and you'd see the particles floating in the alkali. So we're very fortunate to have great water up there. Uh, right now, we have 9,000 watts of solar. And when we first started, it was about 20, 2,500 watts, which wasn't nearly enough. We have three freezers, uh, three refrigerators, a uh, commercial ice machine. To operate that, we need to have the solar. But with the 9,000 watts, we could run a carnival during the day. <laughs> but we have storage batteries, which, which, uh, which is for nighttime, uh, backup for nighttime operation. But as uh, uh, long as the batteries are, are up to half full, it's good. Once they go below half full, we have a propane yeah. generator which will fire up and it'll run four or five hours and automatically shut off. But uh, uh, solar is great. Uh, you have to manage your, manage your power at night. And you're aware where people in the city will leave their lights on at night. We make sure we shut, you leave a room, you shut a light off. Not that we need to, but we're just conscious of that. But uh, uh, you, have, you have to have some kind of technical knowledge to run on solar because you always have issues. You have to make sure you maintain the batteries. You, we have a neighbor who's a solar uh, uh, repairman, and he takes care of our units when we have serious problems. most serious problem we had about, um, about a month and a half ago, we had a lightning strike about 500 yards from the house, and it took out half of our solar. Uh, a million volts went right through the solar panel, bypassed the, uh, the lightning protector, and took out our unit. And what we had to do is we had to scramble to get the extension cords, run generators to get things running again. What, what, what do you run off the solar? Do you have AC? No, no AC up there. We have 110. It's a 28 volt system that uh, we can have 110. Now there's someone uh, off the Florence Calvin Highway that actually runs air conditioning, full air conditioning, but they have a hundred panels. Wow. And uh, so we have, we have about uh, 38 panels right now. And uh, up there we're a little cooler than everyone else, so we run uh, uh, swamp cooler. Yeah. And that, that provides enough cooling that we really, we do have a little backup portable air conditioner one day. <clears throat> And we run it occasionally. But we, That's the one that's extremely hot, right? Extremely hot, yeah. But, uh, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I can read it. It can be really awful. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have, we have a dedicated panel for the solar well, and it pumps. It's a 28 volt pump. It pumps water, fills the holding tank above ground, and automatically shuts off with a float. But uh, occasionally, more than occasionally, <laughs> uh, the goats will. We have automatic waters for the goats because I can't keep up with filling up their uh, uh, water. They drink a lot of water in the summer, not so much in the winter. Uh, but what happens is they'll turn over a bucket. Yeah. And we're either in the valley of the sun or we're sleeping and all of a sudden 
You're out of water. You go to flush a toilet or turn mm -hmm. the water spigot, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we, what we have is a backup tank where we come to the Florence. Florence has a community well and it's 25 cents for 100 gallons and we'll fill up our water tanks and we'll keep a tank on, on hand with a jet pump to refill it. So. One thing that, that I've noticed you can do is um, if your tank's a little bit bigger than what you usually use, you have a pipe coming out of the middle and that's what usually feeds everything and then you uh, have a pipe coming out of the bottom of the tank and that pipe out of the bottom is your emergency. Mm -hmm. So you're always feeding out of this top one in case it goes kick it out and there's no water, then you just go and open the bottom one. And so you have two leak. tanks. Essentially it's one tank on, in one tank but with two outlets. Oh, okay. And that way, that's like an emergency backup, right? You yeah. always have a little bit of water saved up. I don't know if you've not seen the, that. System. Well, then it also affects when the water the water runs out into the desert, all the water that they upset and we're asleep or whatever. Well, then our um, makes our our pump and our wells run more. Well, right. then that affects our solar at night. We wake up and the generators on because all that all that power <clears throat> was used to pump. The well. Uh -huh. well, what happens from our tank, it drains down, we're on top of the hill, and it drains down to a, a shallow well pump, and it pumps it back and pressurizes it through a pressure tank to get us pressure to the house and also to the animals. And uh, if that runs all night, it eats up the battery power and the generator will come on. So there's always something, when the generator comes on, we It'll usually come on maybe once a month, maybe once every two months. If, if everything, if we have good sunshine and we don't have cloudy days. Now that we added more power, uh, another 3,000 watts, it, it helped that to where we don't have to worry about using too much power at night. The, the, uh, the extra solar had boosted us up to the point where we don't have to do that. But, but if the shallow well pump runs all night, it's going to drain the battery. So. Okay, the mechanical operations. Uh, basically, the biggest problem we have there is uh, coyotes. We have packs of coyotes up there. And we have herd protection dogs to, to actually uh, keep the coyotes away. Uh, we have Anatolian Shepherds, Kangal, Anatolians, and then we have Great Pyrenees. And uh, we basically have right now 10 dogs. We seem to have the Kangal that have birth, give birth and probably have more, but uh, those usually keep the coyotes, and the, we have a mountain lion that lives up on the property, keep them at bay. We can generally tell at night what's out there. Uh, if, the, if the Anatolans and the Kangles start howling, they'll have this screeching howl, it'll be coyotes. You can hear the coyotes, and they'll answer back, and they keep them at bay. But uh, if they're just bark, 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 it's usually cattle. We're on open range up there where we the cattle are numerous. If you want them off your property, you have to fence them out. So the cattle will come up along the fence lines at night and they'll get a lot of barking. But rattlesnakes are quite prevalent up there. I, I shoot them probably once a month, but uh, uh, the dogs will alert on the rattlesnake, but they won't go near it. All our dogs have rattlesnake shots, anti venom. But, you know, if they get bit, they won't die or uh, have uh, unusual uh, symptoms. But uh, we also have kangaroo rats. I don't know if anyone familiar with them. They're all over the mountain up there. And what they do is they get into the house. So we have walk the plank. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It looks like a diving board. 
You put it on the bucket, put a little ramp up there. The kangaroo rats go up. A little peanut butter we put on the end. They go to get the peanut butter, they drop, drop in and drop. So we, we have quite a few of those. Um, you got food for your dog. <laughs> you got feed for your dogs now. That's right. The dogs will uh, play with them. They don't eat them. They leave them wet on the porch. And the cats start doing their job. We have two indoor cats, which should be fired. They should be outside. <laughs> and one outdoor cat. The outdoor cat eats rats and rabbits. And yeah. <laughs> I'm going to skip over the, the part about the tours because I know we're on a time crunch. Um, come up to the ranch for the tour today and you'll, um, you'll see all the things that we have. We have a farm store and it's really a, a really good tour. Um, we also sell our goats to 4-H students. and. Um, this is my, um, my grandson. He lives in the city. I can't believe he's doing this, but he is. Um, he is testing. We're getting ready to milk a goat, and he is testing the milk to make sure there's no impurities in it. Um, we have a lot of tours. People are coming up and are very interested in the goats. And like during COVID, we were overwhelmed with visitors. People came up and they were so excited to get out of the city. So um, it has really been a, a good a good experience for us. This is our um, we make cheese and fudge, so it's lotions, dog treats. Here's a picture of our um, goat um, cheese. It's hanging. Part of the process of making cheese is you have to hang it and we use muslin and we hang it and then it usually takes about eight hours. We make two kinds. We make shem, which is a soft spreadable cheese, and feta, which is a crumbly cheese. And um, <clears throat> this is part of we we have to hang with we have to hang our cheese with both of our products though. There's a picture of the dog, some of them. This is our Kangle that's getting ready to have babies. And uh, this is a, um, these are, um, and this is an Anatolian uh, Kangle, and these are um, Kangle Great Pyrenees. They're all livestock protection animals. And I would never live on that mountain without them. Mm. They have saved us so many times with, with the rattlesnake situation. They, they're just wonderful. Main pen, we have two pure red Anatolian and a Kangle uh, Great Pyrenees mix, and they live there, they've been living there for six years now. And nothing has got into the pen. Two skunks got into the pen uh, two, two weeks in a row, and they killed them and ate them. And they didn't get sprayed. No, they didn't just, oh, they didn't get they sprayed. sprayed. They're, uh, Kangles and Anatolians are extremely fast. And they're very strong. They they look like they'll bark at you, and they, they look like they're just a normal dog, but they're extremely strong. They have a scissors bite, and they go for the neck, and they they can snap a a, a coyote or a mountain lion's neck in one in one. Swoop. They're very very strong dogs. And I think this is Bob's favorite picture. There's his friend, Bucky. Now, isn't that a perfect name for a buck? <laughs> you know, we usually dehorn our bucks, but uh, he had Cochidia, Coccidia. We had uh, uh, rampant uh, two years in a row. Uh, two years ago, it was really bad. We lost a lot of animals. We finally got a vet out of uh, uh, Gilbert, and they suggested a program, and we, this year it was we didn't lose any goats at Coxidia, but uh, some of the goats that had it weren't dehorned. And that's a full set of horns on a buck. And, uh, but like I say, we usually dehorn them. And this is, this is what happens when you get too attached to a, an animal. 
You can't let it go. You have to keep it. <laughs> and that's probably half of ours are just because they're pets. Oh, and here it is. It's night now. And we're at the end of the day. And uh, here's one of our babies was enjoying the campfire with Bob. Uh, we have beautiful sunsets up there. And um, <clears throat> this is hard work. I will tell you, this is not an easy thing to do, and it's just my husband and I, and we managed to do it, but we love it or we wouldn't do it. So, I don't know if you have time for any quick questions. Or, no, we don't have Thank time. Thank you very much. I have a gift for you. Bob and Suzanne, we appreciate your coming, and if you have any guidance on how to drive to your place, I mean, that's not for GPS, but... Yeah, you take... Uh, you go out of Florence, like you're going to Tucson, you'll see a sign that says Tucson Oracle. The next road would be the Florence Calvin Highway. It goes from Florence to the small town of Calvin. You go 14 miles on the Florence Calvin Highway. You come down into a wash, it's a concrete bottom wash. The uh, next road is the Parkerville Road, it'll be posted. You go 3.7 miles up the Barkerville Road, and you'll you'll see a street sign that says Majestic Eagle Way. It's the first sign on that road, and we're there. And I'll have the gate open. There'll be a huge gate there with an eagle, an iron eagle on it. And if the eagle's gone, he flew away. <laughs> Definitely. We wanted to give you this little gift for speaking to us today. <laughs>